How's it going? Yeah, it's going well, thanks. How are you, man? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, doing all right. Where are you at the moment? I am in Creemore, uh, just outside of Collingwood. Um, yeah, my, my wife and I moved up here about a year ago from the city. So yeah, we're out in the country now. And how's that been? A bit of a change of pace? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, yeah, so far so good. I mean, our we only really know like our existence here has been like purely based uh, like during COVID, but uh, so <laughs> so far we're we're liking it. It's nice to have a little more space and uh, yeah, a little more room. What do you miss about the city? So far, not much yet, but uh, I will probably start missing the food soon. Our food options here are not bad, but they're they're pretty limited. So we're eating the going to the same restaurants a lot you know yeah. not not as much variation yeah well at least we can go to restaurants now right true very true i have heard your new album it is a thing of beauty i have to oh, say and i don't say that to everybody when did this album start for you uh it started kind of right at the beginning of the pandemic i had uh i released my last record uh in may of 2020 during the pandemic or right when it started yeah and then yeah, once that record was out, it was sort of just like, okay, what now? Uh, I was supposed to be on the road a bunch and, you know, canceled 40 shows. You know, I, I'm sure you've heard this story from everybody at this point. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so really just kind of, it took me a long time to actually write anything. I think, I think myself and a lot of other artists, I think we all thought like, oh, now we have this unlimited time to write music. And I feel like everybody right at the beginning found it hard to actually write just because I, I think it was just this adjustment um of having all this time and then yes yeah, eventually i, I kind of started to get into a into a routine of writing and and uh then it the album kind of came together really fast i would say i wrote the bulk of the songs in a in a four or five month period so th that's a lot quicker than usual for me so yeah it came together pretty quick yeah what was the first song that you wrote for this record First one was the big one, which is the first song. And yeah, actually this album, it sort of worked out that the track listing is basically the timeline of, of how I wrote it, um, which was sort of kind of uh, subconsciously, I think a thing that happened, but it was just kind of, I guess, kind of the process of what I was sort of working through uh, with these songs. So yeah, kind of, it, it started with the big one, which is obviously very much about like the, the the universal uh fear of of the end of the world which i think was on a lot of people's minds around that time i think that, it, that would have been a good closing song for that movie don't look up yeah yeah totally have you, have you seen yeah. that movie like, i have yeah, I, yeah. I, could, I, I could imagine that you know that kind of calmly optimistic doomsday kind of vibe right yeah quite well with that with that yeah, then, I, love, I love how you say calmly optimistic doomsday because that's like that's exactly how how I feel about that song. I'm like, yeah. it's not totally doomsday, but yeah, it's got a very uplifting feel to it. It's kind of like if you don't pay attention to the lyrics, it can feel like a very positive, you know, kind of kind of vibe. But then yeah. when you start paying attention to the lyrics, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you um, do you remember having the idea for that song the first time you had the idea for that? Because that's quite an unusual li lyric to come up with. Yeah, well, the, I I learned about the big one er, like a few years earlier when I was uh, I was traveling in the Pacific Northwest and um, hanging out with some friends who lived out there. And and one of one of my friends had recently relocated there from from Tennessee, and she was terrified of of the big one, which I had never heard about. But it's basically basically the Pacific Northwest is on a massive fault line that is expected to have a, you know, a, a massive earthquake at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's supposed to be, you know, there'll be a lot of residual effects of a giant tsunami. And so she, we would we would be going out, you know, we'd be going on hikes or like walking around some of the towns we were going to and she'd be pointing out all the tsunami evacuation signs and it got to the point where then now i started noticing them all the time and it just kind of became a recurring thought in my head so um i didn't really set out to write a song about that but i think subconsciously that that lyric kind of worked its way into my brain and so naturally when i was 
uh, writing about the end of the world, like that that image kind of popped into my head. Do you see a connection between all the songs on this album? Is there a thread to them? There is, yeah. This this is probably the most connected album I've written, and I think it's because it's it's probably the most personal album I've written. So um, there's there's definitely a big connection personally for me. Uh, I was I was going through a lot of stuff at the time. I mean, on top of the pandemic, which was already already very difficult, especially for a for a touring musician. Um, uh, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, stage four cancer, and she, you know, we were going through a lot as a family, and I was just kind of struggling with a lot of stuff personally, a lot of, um, a lot of like, I guess I would say like anger and bitterness at first, and uh, and definitely some some anxiety and and just a bunch of different emotions, and I don't think I, I don't think I set out to write an album about all that, but I think, uh, I think subconsciously i was really working through a lot of these things personally and so i would say this this is the first album that i think is just very much specifically about me and in, in my life whereas i think before i was you know my last album i like to tell people that it was sort of like thoughts from a from a wallflower like more of an observer observing other people's lives whereas this record is very much about just kind of what I was going through and, and the timeline of, of working through all, all that stuff. Do you think writing these songs helped? Was it therapeutic? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because I, I used to tell people that songwriting was not a cathartic process for me. It was, it was something that I did when I was in a good mood and I could never write when I was in a bad mood or I could never write about. I felt like I couldn't write about what I was feeling. It was mostly sort of just something I liked to do. It, it was a, uh, I guess I just made a habit out of songwriting, whereas this record was the first time it it actually felt cathartic. And it was actually, in a weird way, the most enjoyable writing process I've I've had because I think once I sort of opened up myself to realizing like, oh, okay, these these songs are about me and what I'm going through, then it just, it really flowed more than it has in the past. It, it just, the, I, I, I can't stress enough like the general ease of writing this album which has not not been a thing for me in the past normally i really i really spend forever on songs and i'm tweaking lyrics for months and and i'm kind of hammering out line by line whereas this record felt like it just kind of kind of came out and like like i said i've made i've made fun of people who say that in the past saying like this was a real (laughs) therapeutic and cathartic process but it, it it absolutely was one of the interesting things about this album is the people you've invited onto the album with you. Yeah. Almost half the songs on the album have a feature. They're all female singers. Is that because they bring something to the songs that you can't? How, how did that whole process work? Yeah, it wasn't really intentional. I think a lot of it was just kind of wanting to be collaborative, especially because it was hard to be collaborative during that time and um half the people singing on it i have i haven't even met yet um you know i I haven't met katie pruitt yet and i haven't met stephanie lambring yet um but we had been kind of messaging back and forth about each other's albums and um you know did did a couple of of uh, co-writes over zoom and so it was mostly just a way of trying to be collaborative with some artists that I really loved. Yeah, and the fact that they they were women was purely coincidence. I think they were they most of them are just artists that I love and have been listening to, and and were gracious enough to uh, to want to be involved on the album. So most of it just happened remotely, where um, they sent me their vocals from home. Um, so yeah, it was it's definitely my most collaborative album yet in terms of of just trying to get people involved and, and be a part of it. So, yeah. And you chose people people who I'm a massive fan of, all of them. Yeah. I hadn't heard of Stephanie, actually. She was the only one that I didn't know. And then as soon as I saw her on your track, I kind of went and started digging on her stuff. And so thank you for introducing me to Stephanie because I love what she's done as well. Um, yeah, she's amazing. Did you write these songs with these people in mind or how, how did that whole thing work? No, I didn't at all. It just kind of happened happened naturally. Um, we got, you know, Kathleen sang on the first two songs. She um, she's good friends with with my producer Jim Bryson, where where yeah. I did the album. He he asked her what song she wanted to sing on, and she she picked the first two songs. And 
Um, and Caroline, uh, Caroline Brooks was working on her album at Jim's at the same time. Uh, and she sang on two songs. So it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of happened uh, organically. I, I didn't really have any specific songs in mind for who I wanted um, people to sing on, but it worked out amazingly in terms of, I feel like I got the right people to sing on each song. So I'm, I'm not, I still don't know how it happened, but it all just kind of came together. Did any of the artists surprise you with what they contributed to the songs? Yeah, I would say both Kathleen and Katie, their parts, Kathleen on the big one and then Katie Pruitt's vocals on uh, Consolation Prize. I was so, um, I was so just thrilled by what they sent because I, it was so uniquely them. I felt like it, it wasn't just, you know, I have, I had this idea of, of the harmony part for each song, but what they sent was so different than what I had imagined. And it was so much more unique. And I think Kathleen even said that when she went in to sing on the big one, she, she said, you know, do you want just the, the normal harmony or do you want me to add a little bit of, of my own thing to it? And of course, you know, Jim and I wanted her to add her own, her own unique spin on it, which she did. And, um, and then Katie's part too, um, she sent in sort of this, this, I want to say like dissonant vocal, which just, it, it just works so well with the song. Um, and yeah, so it, she, uh, she doubled it as well. And I her I really love the sound of her doubled vocals on, on that song. So yeah, pleasantly surprised by, by their creativity on that one. When did the album title come to you? Pretty early on after I wrote that last song with Cerulean, um, I felt like that song really, tied everything together um kind of wrapped it all up in a bow everything i was feeling and and basically kind of describes this the general theme of the of the album which to me is sort of searching for this um searching for like an inner peace or 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 an equilibrium um so it just it felt like that that should be the title since it kind of described uh the the whole sound of the album i think yeah well i looked up the word um, so yeah. we, um, just to make sure what it what it was, and it it basically said calming and like it uh, represents the sky a lot, and it, it that made me think of like listening to this music in summer somewhere in nature maybe and kind yeah. of you know relaxing and looking up at the sky and then it seemed to it seemed to fit perfectly. So I, I wanted to know what your answer to that. that question. Yeah, well that 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 song is sort of about like this how we kind of view our moods and colors. And so that that color to me, like you said, is kind of a very, very calming color as opposed to like, you know, your your anxious oranges and your your jealous greens. And so, yeah, it just immediately when I wrote that song, I I, I had it in mind for the title. I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but you know when people associate colors with sounds? It's yeah. like something that people, a gift in a way that some people have. I wonder, right. I wonder what colors they would associate with the songs. Yeah, that'd be interesting to hear because I feel like I mean I know I don't have perfect pitch in that way or or but I I definitely associate certain moods with colors, especially in music. So it'd be interesting to to hear everyone's different take on these songs and if they land on sort of similar colors or yeah all over the place. I I heard somebody. Um, somebody talking about that condition and saying that Jump by Van Halen was like the worst song ever for that. Oh, really? <laughs> Almost painful to them. <laughs> I can see that with that like synth line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was the music you were first introduced to? What was the first music when you were growing up that excited you? Yeah, I mean, I grew up with kind of my dad playing a lot of 70s uh, singer songwriters, a lot of Neil Young and, and James Taylor and um definitely gravitated towards towards that when I started songwriting yeah and but you know all all those 70s guys and Dylan and a little bit of the Beatles growing up so um yeah and then I kind of uh, ventured it into more of like the indie side and listened to a lot of Radiohead and um a lot of like Sufjan Stevens once I uh you know later in my teens so that was like your own music that you, your dad wasn't listening to that was your first introdu introduction to something that you claimed as your own yeah exactly yeah what other new music do you get excited about at the moment like you're obviously collaborating with people who are very current and doing amazing work 
um what do you listen to these days that's new yeah i, I mean i would say my favorite genre right now is is the uh the sad girl uh <laughs> sad girl music you know i love i love phoebe bridgers and uh, i've been listening a lot to that new um christian lee hudson record and um yeah, nice listen to a lot of kurt vile um a lot of war on drugs these days um love war on drugs yeah so that's that's more of the genre I listen to, which I think uh, I, I like to tell people that my past few albums like were very folk based, and and I'm always a little bit confused about that now when I listen to my my older records because I never really was super into folk music. So I somehow <laughs> somehow I ended up making folk records, and I think it was a um, maybe just the ease of touring as a like solo. Um, acoustic performer and you know playing a lot of house concerts and mm. playing in small rooms and stuff that i gravitated towards that genre but with this record i definitely wanted to try to make a record that sounded more like the stuff that i listened to if that makes right. sense <laughs> and you, are you the kind of person that sits down and goes right i'm gonna write a song today or things just come to you and you kind of bits come to you as you as you go about your daily life yeah, I mostly try to just write a little bit every day. And most of the time I don't get something, but it, it does come in waves where I just get little bits and pieces and, and I kind of, it's rare that I would write uh, a whole song in a day. I would say it, it normally happens over over a period of time where I just kind of keep sitting down with the same part and eventually, eventually it comes together over time. Do you always write on guitar? Yeah, I I have been trying to write a little more on on piano. I have a, just a little crappy keyboard here, but um, I, so far I haven't been able to write anything on it. So, do you play but, any other instruments apart from keys and guitar? No, that's it. So yeah, it's mostly mostly guitar based. But I'm uh, I'm hoping I'll write something on piano soon. Yeah, I've heard people say before that when they sometimes they can get a bit too comfortable with their instrument and they feel like their hand is automatically going places. Whereas when they try an instrument, they're not quite as proficient with. Yeah. Different things happen and different songs are created because of that process. Is that something you think might happen? Yeah, I would like it to. I definitely have that issue with, with the guitar and I'm making things hard for myself now performing this album because when I do get kind of bored of what I'm playing on the guitar, I usually will switch up a tuning and, and just either play the same chord progression in a completely different tuning. And mm -hmm. so this album was a lot of it was played in this crazy drop C tuning. So now I'm struggling with how I'm going to play <laughs> everything because if like, I don't want to be tuning my guitar after every song. So I've you been need a uh, guitar tech. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. One of these days I'll have a guitar tech, but yeah, for the, for those solo sets, it's going to be interesting trying to find a tuning that works for for all the songs. But that's usually my way of trying to just sort of change change things up, and um, and that that does generally work pretty well. Just trying a new tuning. Have you played any of these songs live yet? No, no, I haven't, and I've hardly played any of the songs from the last album yeah. Live yet. So, yeah, that's why I've been the last few weeks. I've been figuring out how to play them all <laughs> yeah so it must be exciting to get back out and in front of an audience especially as you're kind of promoting two albums not one in a way yeah exactly no I, i'm really excited i'm i i'm excited and nervous you know it's been it's been over over two years now so um you know i'm definitely I, i'm gonna try to set up a couple practice shows i think just to try and get back into a, a groove because yeah, it's been a while. You have much more planned for the summer? Uh, yeah, a couple of festivals this summer, and then um, then I'll probably uh, – I've got some more sh shows I'm working on for the fall uh, in the U.S. So, yeah, just as just as much touring as possible, I think. Once, once I get back to it, I'm just going to try to be on the road as much as possible. Okay, well, uh, I wish you all the best with it. Like, I, as I say, I love the album, and um, hopefully I'll get to hear these – songs in a room sometime uh maybe you can start thinking about coming to montreal sometime soon i would love to yeah hopefully if somebody had never heard your music what song would you play them first to tell them what you were all about oh that's a good question that's a tough one 
I mean, I feel like it changes all the time for me. I would probably play them. It would either be the big one. Um, I feel like that's kind of a, a good introduction towards how the rest of the album sounds. It would either be the big one or um, track three on the album, which is Don't Mean to Wake You, which is um, my personal favorite on the album. Um, and I feel like just sort of generally encompasses my writing and, and my sound. So yeah, those would be the two. Nice. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time and um, good luck with everything. And uh, hopefully I will see you in Montreal at some point. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm.